Okay so about a week ago someone sent me a video claiming that this coronavirus pandemic was a conspiracy. I immediately recognized several logical fallacies in the video. So not only was my bullshit detector going haywire, I was annoyed that someone was exploiting this pandemic for political gain. This person is Shiva Ayadurai. I made a video debunking his claims, and I have linked to that video in the description. However, in doing my research I realized this man has made a huge push to be known as the person who invented the email. This has involved a PR campaign as well as lawsuits aimed at publications that refuted his obviously false claim. So here is a video dedicated solely to this subject. Internet historians regard Ray Tomlinson as the inventor of the email. However, Chivaya Urai claims to have that honor. The error of his claim can be shown by viewing the letter he wrote in 1982 when he released his software. He claims that his software is as good as electronic mailing software in existence. It's not better, it's not revolutionary. It's not the first electronic mailing quote unquote system. It's simply as good as what's already out there. What is new is that he's calling it e-mail, instead of electronic mail. This abbreviation is clever and deserves mention, but he is claiming to have invented the actual software and or process of email, and this is blatantly false. So, it doesn't matter what semantic games and revisionism we can find on Ayadurai's websites 35 to 40 years later. His own words from 1982 render all of that moot. Going back to 1977, five years before Ayadurai released his software, we can see documentation of early emailing features which include the to field, as well as the at symbol. Going back one year earlier, to 1976, we can see an article in Business Week describing inter-office electronic email. Then, two years later, the first mass email, or spam if you will, was sent. This is all before I or I released his software. Now, back to Tomlinson. According to the Internet Hall of Fame, Raymond Tomlinson is widely known for inventing network electronic mail choosing the at sign in emails to connect the username with the destination address. His email software, SMDMSG, was widely distributed for years, and proved to be an exceptionally innovative solution. Tomlinson was also lead in developing the required services in network electronic mail, including defining a place to put inbound email on the user's machine, developing a mail transport agent to move email between machines creating a protocol for moving email between machines, setting a standard format for email messages, and designing a tool for creating and reading email. In addition to his significant contributions to network email, he played a leading role in developing the first email standards. In 1972, Tomlinson was one of the participants in a meeting to enhance FTP to support email, which was used until 1982 when it was replaced by SMTP. In addition, Tomlinson was a co-author of RFC 561, September 1973, the first standard for Internet email message formats. RFC 561 defined several of the email fields we still use today, for example from, subject and date. So what was new about Iadurai's system? According to Internet technology historian, Thomas Hay. In a word, nothing. It was an impressive accomplishment for a teenager, but even Iadurai's own description of its capabilities includes no features that had not already been used in other electronic mail systems. So, if it's cut and dry that Ray Tomlinson is the inventor of the email, or at the very least, that Shiva Iadurai clearly isn't, how is this a controversy? It's simple, Tomlinson never bothered to take credit for it, whereas Iadurai not only took credit, but had the benefit of a strong public relations campaign that included reaching out to publications like Time Magazine and Huffington Post who were duped into publishing what they were told. Once the internet history geeks caught wind of this, they were quick to make the correction. Iadurai responded by actually suing TechDirt and Gorka. With TechDirt, no money was awarded to Iadurai but their legal fees apparently threatened the very livelihood of the publication. Gawker on the other hand paid out 750,000. This is likely so the publication, which was already going bankrupt after the Hulk Hogan lawsuit, could be sold off. Also, 
To be fair, unlike Tech Dirt, the Gawker articles were a bit insulting to Ayad Urai's personal character, so that may have been a factor. In any case, Ayad Urai is now claiming to be the victim of a coordinated campaign, when in fact this is simply the result of his own attempt to take credit for something he didn't do. And now, he's exploiting confusion over the coronavirus to blame the quote-unquote establishment and deep state. Apparently the other countries, nor various non-profits like Doctors Without Borders and the Mayo Clinic just aren't sharp enough to see the grift. As always, it's only people who have books and other products to sell and nor offices to run for that can see the grift.